Section fifteen of A to Z. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A to Z by Various. Observations on Puddings and Pies by William Kitchener. The quality of the various articles employed in the composition of puddings and pies varies so much that two puddings made exactly according to the same receipt will be so different one would hardly suppose they were made by the same person and certainly not with precisely the same quantities of the apparently same ingredients flour fresh ground pure new milk fresh laid eggs fresh butter fresh suet etc will make a very different composition than when kept till each article is half spoiled plum puddings when boiled if hung up in a cool place in the cloth they are boiled in will keep good some months when wanted take them out of the cloth and put them into a clean cloth and as soon as warmed through they are ready memorandum in composing these receipts the quantities of eggs butter etc are considerably less than are ordered in other cookery books but quite sufficient for the purpose of making the puddings light and wholesome we have diminished the expense without impoverishing the preparations and the rational epicure will be as well pleased with them as the rational economist milk in its genuine state varies considerably in the quantity of cream it will throw up depending on the material with which the cow is fed the cow that gives the most milk does not always produce the most cream which varies fifteen or twenty per cent eggs vary considerably in size in the following receipts we mean the full-sized hen's egg if you have only pullet's eggs use two for one break eggs one by one into a basin and not all into the bowl together because then if you meet with a bad one that will spoil all the rest strain them through a sieve to take out the treadles nb to preserve eggs for twelve months in a sweet and palatable state for eating in the shell or using for salads by boiling them for one minute and when wanted for use let them be boiled in the usual manner the white may be a little tougher than a new laid egg but the yelk will show no difference snow and small beer have been recommended by some economists as admirable substitutes for eggs they will no more answer this purpose than as substitutes for sugar or brandy flour according to that champion against adulteration mr ackham varies in quality as much as anything butter also varies much in quality salt butter may be washed from the salt and then it will make very good pastry lard varies extremely from the time it is kept etc when you purchase it have the bladder cut and ascertain that it be sweet and good suet beef is the best then mutton and veal when this is used in very hot weather while you chop it dredge it lightly with a little flour beef marrow is excellent for most of the purposes for which suet is employed drippings especially from beef when very clean and nice are frequently used for kitchen crusts and pies and for such purposes are a satisfactory substitute for butter lard etc to clean and preserve drippings see footnote number eighty three currants previous to putting them into the pudding should be plumped this is done by pouring some boiling water upon them wash them well and lay them on a sieve or cloth before the fire pick them clean from the stones this not only makes them look better but cleanses them from all dirt raisins figs dried cherries candied orange and lemon peel citron and preserves of all kinds fresh fruits gooseberries currants plums damsons etc are added to batter and suet puddings or enclosed in the crust ordered for apple dumplings and make all the various puddings called by those names batter puddings must be quite smooth and free from lumps to ensure this first mix the flour with a little milk add the remainder by degrees and then the other ingredients 
if it is a plain pudding put it through a hair sieve this will take out all lumps effectually batter pudding should be tied up tight if boiled in a mould butter it first if baked also butter the pan be sure the water boils before you put in the pudding set your stew pan on a trivet over the fire and keep it steadily boiling all the time if set upon the fire the pudding often burns be scrupulously careful that your pudding cloth is perfectly sweet and clean wash it without any soap unless very greasy then rinse it thoroughly in clean water after immediately before you use it dip it in boiling water squeeze it dry and dredge it with flour if your fire is very fierce mind and stir the puddings every now and then to keep them from sticking to the bottom of the saucepan if in a mould this care is not so much required but keep plenty of water in the saucepan when puddings are boiled in a cloth it should be just dipped in a basin of cold water before you untie the pudding cloth as that will prevent it from sticking but when boiled in a mould if it is well buttered they will turn out without custard or bread puddings require to stand five minutes before they are turned out they should always be boiled in a mould or cups keep your pasteboard rolling pin cutters and tins very clean the least dust on the tins and cutters or the least hard paste on the rolling pin will spoil the whole of your labour things used for pastry or cakes should not be used for any other purpose be very careful that your flour is dried at the fire before you use it for puff paste or cakes if damp it will make them heavy if using butter for puff paste you should take the greatest care to previously work it well on the pasteboard or slab to get out all the water and buttermilk which very often remains in when you have worked it well with a clean knife dab it over with a soft cloth and it is then ready to lay on your paste do not make your paste over stiff before you put it in your butter for those who do not understand making puff paste it is by far the best way to work the butter in at two separate times divide it in half and break the half in little bits and cover your paste all over dredge it lightly with flour then fold it over each side and ends roll it out quite thin and then put in the rest of the butter fold it and roll it again remember always to roll puff paste from you the best made paste if not properly baked will not do the cook any credit those who use iron ovens do not always succeed in baking puff paste fruit pies etc puff paste is often spoiled by baking it after fruit pies in an iron oven this may be easily avoided by putting two or three bricks that are quite even into the oven before it is first set to get hot this will not only prevent the syrup from boiling out of the pies but also prevent a very disagreeable smell in the kitchen and house and almost answers the same purpose as a brick oven college puddings beat four eggs yolks and whites together in a quart basin with two ounces of flour half a nutmeg a little ginger and three ounces of sugar pounded loaf sugar is best beat it into a smooth batter then add six ounces of suet chopped fine six of currants well washed and picked mix it all well together a glass of brandy or white wine will improve it these puddings are generally fried in butter or lard but they are much nicer baked in an oven in patty pans twenty minutes will bake them if fried fry them till they are a nice light brown and when fried roll them in a little flour you may add one ounce of orange or citron minced very fine when you bake them add one more egg or two spoonfuls of milk serve them up with white wine sauce rice puddings baked or boiled wash in cold water and pick very clean six ounces of rice put it in a quart stew pan three parts filled with cold water set it on the fire and let it boil five minutes pour away the water and put in one quart of milk a roll of lemon peel and a bit of cinnamon let it boil gently till the rice is quite tender it will take at least one hour and a quarter be careful to stir it every five minutes take it off the fire and stir in an ounce and a half of fresh butter 
and beat up three eggs on a plate a salt spoonful of nutmeg two ounces of sugar put it into the pudding and stir it till it is quite smooth line a pie dish big enough to hold it with puff paste notch it round the edge put in your pudding and bake it three quarters of an hour this will be a nice firm pudding if you like it to eat more like custard add one more egg and half a pint more milk it will be better a little thinner when boiled one hour will boil it if you like it in little puddings butter small teacups and either bake or boil them half an hour will do either you may vary the pudding by putting in candied lemon or orange peel minced very fine or dried cherries or three ounces of currants or raisins or apples minced fine if the puddings are baked or boiled serve them with white wine sauce or butter and sugar ground rice pudding put four ounces of ground rice into a stew pan and by degrees stir in a pint and a half of milk set it on the fire with a roll of lemon and a bit of cinnamon keep stirring it till it boils beat it to a smooth batter then set it on the trivet where it will simmer gently for a quarter of an hour then beat three eggs on a plate stir them into the pudding with two ounces of sugar and two drachms of nutmeg take out the lemon peel and cinnamon stir it all well together line a pie dish with thin puff paste big enough to hold it or butter the dish well and bake it half an hour if boiled it will take one hour in a mould well buttered three ounces of currants may be added rice snowballs wash and pick half a pound of rice very clean put it on in a saucepan with plenty of water when it boils let it boil ten minutes drain it on a sieve till it is quite dry and then pare six apples weighing two ounces and a half each divide the rice into six parcels in separate cloths put one apple in each tie it loose and boil it one hour serve it with sugar and butter or wine sauce rice blancmange put a teacup of whole rice into the least water possible till it almost bursts then add half a pint of good milk or thin cream and boil it till it is quite a mash stirring it the whole time it is on the fire that it may not burn dip a shape in cold water and do not dry it put in the rice and let it stand until quite cold when it will come easily out of the shape this dish is much approved of it is eaten with cream or custard and preserved fruits raspberries are best it should be made the day before it is wanted that it may get firm this blancmange will eat much nicer flavoured with spices lemon peel etc and sweetened with a little loaf sugar add it with the milk and take out the lemon peel before you put in the mould save all pudding put any scraps of bread into a clean saucepan to about a pound put a pint of milk set it on the trivet till it boils beat it up quite smooth then break in three eggs three ounces of sugar with a little nutmeg ginger or allspice and stir it all well together butter a dish big enough to hold it put in the pudding and have ready two ounces of suet chopped very fine strew it over the top of the pudding and bake it three quarters of an hour four ounces of currants will make it much better batter pudding baked or boiled break three eggs in a basin with as much salt as will lie on a sixpence beat them well together and then add four ounces of flour beat it into a smooth batter and by degrees add half a pint of milk have your saucepan ready boiling and butter an earthen mould well put the pudding in and tie it tight over with a pudding cloth and boil it one hour and a quarter or put it in a dish that you have well buttered and bake it three quarters of an hour currants washed and picked clean or raisins stoned are good in this pudding and it is then called a black cap or add loaf sugar and a little nutmeg and ginger without the fruit it is very good that way serve it with wine sauce apple pudding boiled chop four ounces of beef suet very fine or two ounces of butter lard or dripping but the suet makes the best and lightest crust put it on the pasteboard with eight ounces of flour and a salt spoonful of salt 
mix it very well together with your hands and then put it all of a heap and make a hole in the middle break one egg in it stir it well together with your finger and by degrees infuse as much water as will make of it a stiff paste roll it out two or three times with the rolling pin and then roll it large enough to receive thirteen ounces of apples it will look neater if boiled in a basin well buttered than when boiled in a pudding cloth well floured boil it an hour and three quarters but the surest way is to stew the apples first in a stew pan with a wine glass full of water and then one hour will boil it some people like it flavoured with cloves and lemon peel and sweeten it with two ounces of sugar gooseberries currants raspberries and cherries damsons and various plums and fruits are made into puddings with the same crust directed for apple puddings apple dumplings make paste the same as for apple pudding divide it into as many pieces as you want dumplings peel the apples and core them then roll out your paste large enough and put in the apples close it all round and tie them in pudding cloths very tight one hour will boil them and when you take them up just dip them in cold water and put them in a cup the size of the dumpling while you untie them they will then turn out without breaking suet pudding or dumplings chop six ounces of suet very fine put it in a basin with six ounces of flour two ounces of bread crumbs and a teaspoonful of salt stir it all well together beat two eggs on a plate add to them six tablespoonfuls of milk put it by degrees into the basin and stir it all well together divide it into six dumplings and tie them separate previously dredging the cloth lightly with flour boil them one hour this is very good the next day fried in a little butter the above will make a good pudding boiled in an earthenware mould with the addition of one more egg a little more milk and two ounces of suet boil it two hours nb the most economical way of making suet dumplings is to boil them without a cloth in a pot with beef or mutton no eggs are then wanted and the dumplings are quite as light without roll them in flour before you put them into the pot add six ounces of currants washed and picked and you have currant pudding or divided into six parts currant dumplings a little sugar will improve them cottage potato pudding or cake peel boil and mash a couple of pounds of potatoes beat them up into a smooth batter with about three quarters of a pint of milk two ounces of moist sugar and two or three beaten eggs bake it about three quarters of an hour three ounces of currants or raisins may be added leave out the milk and add three ounces of butter it will make a very nice cake footnote an old gentlewoman who lived almost entirely on puddings told us it was a long time before she could get them made uniformly good till she made the following rule if the pudding was good she let the cook have the remainder of it if it was not good she gave it to her lapdog but as soon as this resolution was known poor little bow wow seldom got the sweet treat after end of section fifteen